handle the overheads for you. Hello, this is Political Forum for Wednesday, June 26, 2013. We welcome today as our guest Alderman Pat Dowell of the Third Ward. Um, thank you for appearing on Political Forum, Alderman Dowell. Thank you very much, Jane. It's great to be here. You know, you and I go back a little ways uh, to yeah. uh, the old Harold Washington days, and it's great to see you again. It's great to be together, <laughs> and I look forward to our chatting. Okay. Um, I'm a board member, as you know, uh, at CAN TV, and this is a live interactive program brought to you as a community service of CAN TV. Um, and we welcome your questions and comments. You can call in. We hope you will. During the next 25 minutes, we're going to try to get to as many of you as possible. So, Pat, um, share with us uh, we have a new map, and I know people are interested in knowing. Uh, um, what, uh, who represents them, and there's been some controversy over that. Can you share uh, the current boundaries of your ward and who you represent and what the issues are uh, regarding the map? Well, you know, the old boundaries of the third ward basically ran from about 14th place down to 57th Street, roughly along State Street, along King Drive. Uh, jumping over to the, jumping over the Dan Ryan, going into Fuller Park and uh, New, New City, and some of Washington Park. So I have the South Loop communities, Bronzeville, uh, and those areas. The new map basically extends my northern boundary to Roosevelt Road, my eastern boundary at Roosevelt Road over to Lakeshore Drive, and uh, my western boundary at Clark Street. So I would say that I now have a good deal more of the South Loop, um, all of the uh, interior of the community that I always had, which includes uh, Bronzeville, a small portion of Washington Park, a all of Fuller Park, which I've always had, mm -hmm. and um, a little bit of Armour Square. Okay. Um, so why did the map change? Well, you know, every 10 years after the census is done, um, the city council reorganizes itself and, and does a what's called the remap. And uh, this year or last year we voted on that. Um, and currently we're acting within our new ward areas. Um, you know, but there's some controversy. Uh, you know, people should know that the map has been challenged. Uh, it's now in court. And uh, I think it's being challenged on the basis of uh, citizens who feel that they elected one person to represent them back in the 2011 election, and now they're being represented um, uh, by a new someone they, they, that they didn't elect. So, um, you know, my point of view is that I'm going to serve everybody. If you live in my old boundaries, I got you. And if you live in my new boundaries, I got you too. Sounds like a, a great way to go. Um, and I think the uh, residents of the third ward, old and new, are lucky. So, thank um, you. So, a lot of things have been going on. Um, you have some new housing development. Um, and uh, before we go to answer that, and I'm going to follow that up, but we do have a caller. Okay. And if we can get to our first caller. Yes, good evening. I have a question uh, for the Alderman. Uh, today, uh, Mayor Emanuel introduced an assault uh, weapons ban uh, for the city of Chicago. So um, what is your uh, take on this, or uh, do you think it's possibly just lip service, or would a, a weapons ban ordinance actually do something? You know, caller, somebody mentioned that to me in council today. If he just introduced it, it hasn't been distributed to the Alderman yet. Um, I know it's probably been assigned probably to the Public Safety Committee um, uh, or Committee on Police and Public Safety. Um, I have not seen the ordinance, so I don't want to comment on that right now. Okay, thank you very much for calling. Um, so, Alderman, uh, there is going to be a new project. It's exciting, uh, the Rosenwald. Uh, 
Uh, yes. Can you uh, yes. share a little bit about that yeah. and what's the impact for families in the third ward? Well, you know, the Rosenwald building is a hulking, um, vacant building on 47th and Michigan. It takes mm -hmm. up literally one full square block. And it's been vacant for over 15 years now. Um, we are in the last stages of finalizing the financing for this project, um, which will be approximately 235 units of uh, rental housing, 97 of which will be for working families, um, there, and 138 for uh, CHA elderly seniors. Um, we are looking at one and two bedroom units. We're also going to have about 70,000 square feet of office and or retail space. And we have a two acre, uh, beautiful two acre interior park that's going to be redeveloped as well. We've selected a general contractor, which is a joint venture of Powers and Sun and Solid Construction. And we're in the process of just uh, dotting our I's and crossing our T's on the financing package so that we can hopefully close by the end of the year. Um, and I know people out there now are very uh, interested in knowing uh, when do you think the development then might be available for people to uh, apply for and what's the process? Oh, it's going to take about 18 months of uh, construction time. So assuming that um, the project closes at the end of the year and we can start construction, you're talking about a full 18 months and so we're looking at probably a 20, late 2014 or uh, 2015 uh, opening date. And I assume at that time you'll be sharing with uh, people how they can oh, yes. learn about it accessing, possibly accessing. The yes, housing. and I would ask people to, uh, you know, from time to time take a look at my website, which is www.dowellforthirdward.com to get the most uh, up-to-date information about the projects. I usually have uh, information in my monthly newsletters, which we also publish in place online. Great, great. Um, thank you, and we have another caller. Uh, Hi, Alderman. Thanks for taking my call. Hi, caller. Um, I'm just curious, Alderman. Uh, I was very disappointed yesterday in the Supreme Court uh, when they struck down the key part of the historic uh, Voting Rights Act of 1965. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of worried that it, it may lead to some discriminatory voting practices. Um, what's your input on that? You know, caller, I too was very disappointed in the uh, Supreme Court's just basically ignoring Section four and five of the Voting Rights Act and um, basically setting us back in time. But, you know, I have to be an optimist and I look at it from a positive perspective, which that is that I hope it will galvanize, um, you know, underrepresented communities, African, the African American community, those people who have been denied the opportunity to fully participate in the society that we will now come together, one, that we will support our uh, traditional organizations that have been on the forefront for us at the time of the Civil Rights Union, that we re-energize the Urban League and the NAACP and get involved in that. And uh, who knows, um, you know, when someone's in the intensive care unit, so to speak, you really fight to stay alive. And so I'm hoping that uh, this will galvanize our communities and other communities across the country. And uh, we can stem the tide of this Republican reactionary uh, bad behavior that we see going through our country and also through the court system. I really appreciate your raising that. It was really a horrific decision. And uh, Alderman, I think that's a great call um, to challenge all of us uh, to remember that uh, to never become complacent. Not to become complacent and to support your institutions. And when those institutions don't do what you want them to do, to be vocal enough to and active enough to, to make the tide go in a different direction or the boat go in a different direction. And I think when we see the Supreme Court um, kick the Voting Rights Act to Congress, uh, we know nothing is happening there. 
Uh, so it's really going to have to be the communities be who are going to have to It's going to be a, rise up. a, a bottoms up uh, approach and uh, where we can reconnect uh, portions of our community to act, you know, we can act in a more uniform fashion, a united fashion. Thank you very much. And we have another caller. Um, uh, well, we're going to go on for another minute. So we've talked about housing. There's no end to, to key issues that are impacting the Third Ward. Mm -hmm. um, another issue that um, had an, a major mm -hmm. impact was the schools closing and the projected school closing, as I understand, in the Third Ward that started at 27 schools. Um, can yeah. you talk to us about that? What happened? What was your response? And um, and where are we today? You know, fortunately, maybe about two years before um, this list comes out from CPS, we were fortunate in the Third Ward and in Bronzeville to create something called the Bronzeville Community Action Council, um, which was focused on school issues. And if not but for their support and a ability to advocate with me to CPS, uh, the damage in the third ward would have been much greater. We originally had 27 schools on the list. We knocked it down to 14. That wasn't good enough. We were able to uh, save all of our schools except for two, which are closing. That's Overton Elementary, which is at uh, 49th in Indiana, and Parkman Elementary at 51st in Princeton. We were able to consolidate um, Williams Elementary and Williams Middle School with Drake and uh, consolidating Overton, I mean, excuse me, Mayo and Wells Prep. And we delayed the closing of Attics until those students who had been impacted by previous uh, school closings actually were allowed to graduate. And then those children that were remaining could then go over to Beethoven. And right now the Beethoven uh, principal and the addicts principal are working together so that that transition in two years will be easier on those children. Um, we are now focusing on resources to make sure that the resources that CPS promised are actually delivered, that those schools that are still resource deficient, we're working to increase their uh, level of resources. We're working on the reuse of the uh, older abandoned buildings now and uh, doing that all with um, my committee. Great, great. Um, well congratulations on moving that from 27 to 2. That um, I, I thought it was incredible. a victory you know and people argue and say that you know uh, no school is really underutilized but in the third ward we lost 15,000 people between the 2000 census and the 2010 census, so we did have underutilized schools. And I'm hopeful now that CPS will put in the resources that they promised and uh, that our children demand so that we can participate in the new global economy. Um, Alderman Dalla, we have another caller. Okay. Hi, Alderman. Thank you for taking my call. Hi. Um, I heard what you just said about the, the schools in your ward, and I was curious um, to get your thoughts about Penny Pritzker having been replaced with um, Deborah Quazzo, who's, of course, another investment banker, someone who deals in wealth. And I just wanted to get your idea on the school board sort of being run by people in business as opposed to people in education and, and whether or not you thought the school board needed to go in a different direction with, say, um, an elected school board or whether or not you think we're you know, on the right track. Okay, thank you for your question, caller. I'm on record as being a supporter of an elected school board. Now, I'm not sure that's going to solve all of our concerns because obviously, you know, they're uh, elected. Um, so maybe some combination between elected and appointed is definitely the way we should go. Um, I think that there's too much control of the CPS by the mayor's office, that we need to um, take some of that power away. Um, I find it very disheartening that a city council uh, that is elected by uh, the citizens of this city, 50 of us, uh, have no input, no say on the CPS budget, on their policies, on uh, 
just generally that bureaucracy and that is problematic. So I was one that supported the referendum uh, on an elected school board that went through various precincts in my ward and I can tell you that the feedback from my residents was between 93 and 98 percent in favor of an elected school board and so that's where I stand. Wow, it's a pretty definitive uh, statistics and we have uh, Alderman, another caller. Okay. Hi, caller. Hi. Uh, I would like to ask a question, not only for your ward, but for a lot of other wards. We have a lot of these, um, I should say, A-Rab stores opening up, especially in the black neighborhoods. And, you know, they don't have no permit. Upstairs is uh, nobody lives there, but they have a grocery store at the bottom, and they sell them food. Um, and I just can't understand that. I don't see them in Caucasian areas. They're all in black areas. Now, I know every alderman have a ward superintendent, and they should be monitoring stuff like this. Okay, the food is outdated. Okay, so if you got a ward superintendent, I'm talking about all over the city, not just you. I'm not pinpointing you, so I want you to know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Board of Health could come in. That's what you have a ward superintendent for. Well, I don't use my ward superintendent for that. I use the uh, Department of Business Affairs, which is really the agency that goes in and cites these stores for expired food, uh, charging too much tax. Uh, selling uh, unstamped cigarettes, selling single cigarettes. Um, so I use them and the Board of Health uh, or the Department of Health to go into these stores. Now I'm, I'm on my stores uh, a lot and if you read my newsletter there's a section in that newsletter every month that's called Trouble Businesses and I will tell you the stores that have been cited, what they've been cited for and when they're hearing date is, location and time. But my expectation is that my community is going to go to those hearings. Now we can complain a lot about these stores, but we have to stop supporting these stores. If these stores didn't take our money, it didn't make our money, they wouldn't be there. And so I think we have to raise our um, level of uh, expectation for what we will accept and I think these stores need to raise their level of standards for what they provide to us and it takes uh, both the community and the alderman's office to work on that and so I agree with you caller. Thank you. Um, you're watching Political Forum, a community service of CAN TV. I'm Jane Ramsey, a board member of CAN TV. This is a live interactive show. If you have a question for Alderman Dowell, please call 326-738-1060. Thank you. Uh, so Alderman, uh, the schools, uh, housing, um, among the, the solutions that people are looking to in many of the wards is taking uh, what is people are referring to as um, excess TIF dollars. TIF surplus. Uh, so um, what's your... Um, really view. You've looked at the TIFs and you've been concerned about TIFs uh, for a long time. You know, I'm one of those aldermen that have like probably over a dozen TIFs. I mean, I think almost when I come into office in 2007, the whole third ward is a TIF. I couldn't believe it. Um, TIFs that have been created um, but n had not really been used. Uh, I am not one of those aldermen that believe that there should be a blanket, let's declare a TIF surplus on all TIFs in the city in order to pay for the schools. I think that um, I had a visit last night from a member of uh, Raise Your Hand. Um, she actually lives in my ward and she wanted to talk to me about my position on TIFs. And I told her, I said that, you know, there are probably some TIFs in the third ward that could be declared surplus. But, you know, most of the TIFs are needed to support job development, housing development, infrastructure improvements, um, all kinds of things that are allowed through the TIF statute. I think we should look perhaps uh, in those uh, areas of the city that are not blighted that also have TIFs um, and 
perhaps declare surplus there. I already I told her I gave it the office the last time a TIF surplus was declared. Um, I think that there are other ways to go. Thank you. Um, and we have another caller. Hi, Alderman. I heard um, that there's a Mariano's coming to the ward. When will that? Okay, the Mariano's is actually at the edge of the third ward. It's a, it would be considered a fourth ward project because it's, I think the location is a fourth ward area. So I'm going to defer to the Alderman of the fourth ward. Okay, great. Um, but there is a Mario's coming at 17th and Clark in October. Um, you know, it took me a minute to make those connections. Um, there's a Mariano's coming, uh, opening in October or sometime towards the end of the year. Um, it's under construction now at 17th and Clark. And if you've been to the one at Madison and Halstead, uh, you know that you're in for a treat. And I'm hopeful that the one that's currently being worked on by my colleague uh, will soon appear. So economic development and job creation has also been a, um, a key concern of yours. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the issues that you see um, facing the third ward relative to jobs and how people can connect with you and and uh, and, and look and see what might be you know, available? It's been a very challenging year and a half. Um, I'm beginning to feel a little more confident about the uplift in our economy. Um, we were struggling for a long time. Uh, but we're working in various ways. Um, we're trying to connect people to construction opportunities that are going on in our ward. We're trying to uh, also connect people to permanent jobs. So for example, the Marianos that's opening up will be working closely with Trinal, to, um, which is a company, to make sure that uh, uh, people are hired from our ward in the permanent jobs that are going to be created by that establishment. We've done it at other establishments that have opened up in the ward. We've also had um, job fairs. Um, we will probably have another job fair this year, one more this year. We've had one already. And, um, you know, we're always trying to connect people to opportunities that we hear about, um, whether we get them through email or by people just walking through the door. So if they want to, um, if anyone wants to know about the array of it, they can contact you, um, check out your website, come by your office. Yes, I would say for information on the construction activities that are going on in the ward or some of the permanent jobs that are being created by some of the work that we're doing, um, you can come to our office and ask for uh, Marcel Bright, who is my current chief of staff. Alderman Dowell, we just have a few minutes left. Are there um, a few comments that you'd like to make well, you before, we, <laughs> before we uh, final? Yeah, um, well. well, I don't have any uh, real comments. I just wanted to. Um, I'm glad that I had an opportunity to be here today. I want to encourage uh, all the people watching out there that have young people who are just getting out of school and trying to figure out how they're going to spend their summer. Uh, that our office is a resource for information, whether it's recreational. For example, we've had the Bronzeville um, uh, Little League just start up, or if you've got an interest in uh, some educational opportunities, uh, we've got some fantastic uh, programs going on at IIT. Um, we have the Clio Center, a number of organizations in the community, Bright Star Church, that are involved in activities for young people. And we can connect you to those, to those opportunities. That's great. Um, and once again, if you need to reach Alderman Pat Dow, please call her at her office. And that number is 773-373-9273. And if you're interested in signing up for our, our monthly newsletter, you can email us at ward03 at cityofchicago.org. Um, Alderman Dow, it is a pleasure to it's be with you. Good to see you, you again, It's Jane. great to see you. Um, and we thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Uh, and we thank you, the viewers, for all your calls. Um, our technical um, telephone technician has been Steve. Uh, thank you very much, Steve. 
A political forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. Please join us again for a political forum next Wednesday. Good night. Good night.